Welcome folks, it's Rick from Southern Thumb again. Um, what I want to go over today is how to properly restring your acoustic guitar. The reason I'd like to do that is because typically during a week I end up restringing about 12 to 15 guitars, week in, week out, when you could really do this yourself. The main reason I like to show people how to do this is because it's one of the best ways to get to know your guitar. I know you think you know it because you sit around and play it all the time, but when you change strings, you're going to discover some things. And that's part of what we're going to go over today. Now, when changing strings, you should have the tools you need ahead of time with you so you don't have to leave the guitar sit. This is a pair of side cutters. This is not a deluxe pair of string cutters, which you will spend $25 or $30 for. These come out of the bargain bin at your local hardware store for about 5 bucks. These will last you forever. So, this is what you need. Also, a peg winder, very helpful. These are about $2.50. So everything I have here is very reasonable. Another thing, a guitar neck rest. This puts the guitar right where you want it to change the strings. Last, I have a screwdriver, which has nothing to do with this. Unless you have small animals, they jump up on the table you're working on and give them a stab. It's just good to have screwdrivers around. First thing I'm going to do is loosen these strings. Since I'm going to change the strings, I really don't want to save the ones that are on it. And trust me, this is one of the best things you can do is clip them off. If you wear glasses like I do, put them on when you do this. The reason I loosen the strings is, when you stamp these, if you've released the tension, they're really not going to go anywhere. If you don't release the tension, a couple things can happen. Put your eye out, or the string will pop backwards and may nick the finish on your guitar, which in the case of this guitar, this is a very lovely tailor, and I don't want to nick the finish on it. Okay, now that the strings are cut, I'm going to unwind them at the peg head, remove them from the posts. Notice I'm doing all of them at one time, not one at a time and then diverting my attention. The reason I'm doing this is I now have six strings in my hand. One thing you don't want to do is let these end up on the floor because if you have anyone in the house that likes to go barefoot or run around their stocking feet, they're going to get hurt. These things are sharp. So, next thing I need to do is to pull the bridge pins. I again use the side cutters for these. I just pull them out. It doesn't take much pressure. Unless your bridge pins happen to be jammed in as if someone hammered them, I will show you when we get to that point that you really do not need to exert much pressure. I'm going to pull these string ends out. Again, I don't want them to end up on the floor. I don't want to get cut. The other thing is, I don't want them to end up inside the instrument, because if they do, sure as heck, you're going to forget they were in there, and you'll wonder what the rattle is inside your guitar. Strings are off. Now, I'm going to do this. This may seem a little odd. You will find any number of things inside an acoustic guitar. Picks. I found some pretty strange things inside guitars. Confetti, bubblegum, um, and a Lego once. So... Nothing inside this one. What I'm going to do, now that we're at that point, wipe off the fretboard. And at this point, I can take a look at my frets. This is why it's a good idea, again, to change your own strings. You can check for premature wear on the frets. These have little witness marks on this particular instrument, which they should because it's played. But there's no issue with these frets. What you look for are divots. If you were to run your fingernail across the fret and it got caught, you may want to have that addressed. You can get your frets dressed, as they call them. They simply file them down, buff them out. This particular instrument does not need it. The other thing you can look for at this point is how dry your fingerboard is. On a tailor, the tailor uses ebony. Ebony really is such a tight grain that it really doesn't dry out. It needs very little attention. This neck, this fingerboard is perfect. If you have any other instrument other than a Martin and some of the high-end 
imports, you will probably have a rosewood fingerboard. Rosewood gets dry. If it exhibits dryness, take a little linseed or lemon oil, or you can buy a pre-made product at your guitar store, and dampen the fingerboard. What happens when a fingerboard gets too dry is the frets can pop. When that happens, you have an unnecessary repair cost that you could have discovered early on if you change your own strings. Okay. I am starting with what they call string number six, which is the big E string, which is closest to me. The reason I do that is it's far easier during the winding process to work away from your body rather than toward it. So I have my first string. I put a little bend right there near the ball end. I'm just going to set that down in the hole in the bridge, take my bridge pin, which is slotted on the front, and push it down. This is loose right now. As you can see, I can pull it right back up. That's fine. Now, important part, unless you like this much dangly stuff hanging off the headstock of your guitar because you think it's cool, which it isn't, because you're going to poke somebody in the eye with it again. This eye poking stuff is serious. What you're going to do is clip the string. What you want to do, put it in its proper slot in the nut. This is the particular post that the E string goes to. All I do is go to the next post and clip this string just past it. Now, what you're going to see when I wind this, I push it through just a little bit, so I have a little bit coming out the other side. I'm going to start my wind. As I wind, hopefully you can see this, the first wind is going over that little piece that sticks out. I'm giving it some downward pressure with my finger so that the next wind goes under that piece. What this does is negate the need to try and tie these strings off. There's absolutely no need to do that. All of my consecutive winds now are going beneath the previous wind. What this does is put downward pressure at the nut where it passes here. You notice my string peg popped out. Good idea to watch that as you're doing this. I'm going to hold my thumb on it. I'm not worried about this point about getting to pitch. I just wanted to get this string tight with some tension on it. First string's done. Also a good idea, so you don't get carried away, I take my strings at first and I line them up according to the size. There's my E string, here's my A string. Nothing worse than getting a guitar string and discover that you have the G string where the B goes because they don't like to intonate well. The pressure's wrong. You're not going to get a good tone. Again, little bend, put it in. You will find when you do this, once you get comfortable with it, it takes you about five minutes to change the strings on a guitar. I know this is taking longer because I'm trying to explain as I go. Again, I go past the post to the next post for my cut. Ideally, when you do this on the three biggest strings you have, which are E, A, and D, you will end up with approximately three lines. That's all you need. Any more than that is a little redundant. Plus, the more winds you get on a post, the more likely you are to have tuning problems because as they stretch, they settle, you will find that you tend to tune more often than you need to. Again, I'm exerting a little bit of downward pressure, making sure that goes down. I'm going to check my bridge pin. Again, this is a wonderful way to get to know your instrument and a really good way to save yourself 25 or 30 bucks. Not that we don't enjoy the work, but you can save me a lot of work in the long run and have a good time changing your own string. So again, this process just follows every string exactly the same on these first three. There's going to be a bit of a change when we get to the treble side with our G, B, and E string. This winding process on the base, what we call the base side of the instrument, with the E, A, and D string, the posts are being wound counterclockwise with the string starting its wrap on the inside. 
I might go to the treble side of the instrument with the GB and A or a GB and E strings. We are going to go to a clockwise wind, and I'll show you why when we get to this. Okay. Again, make a little bend. Now, on the treble side, I want my string inside the posts, so I'm going to be winding clockwise. The reason for this is it exerts a straighter string pull. The way the instrument's designed, string is nice and straight. If I go over to this side to try and wind counterclockwise, it puts an awkward pull on the string. This not only reduces string length, or string strength and longevity, it makes again for difficult tuning. So again, we're going clockwise on this side. Again, our first wrap is over. That little post you have sticking out, the rest of the wraps are under. These string winders save you a lot of time. They are very well worth it. The reason I take care when I wind strings too is so that I have a better chance of once they're tuned, uh, they'll stay tuned for a while. A lot of times with new strings, strings are made of metal, they're wound and compressed, so they will stretch. So whenever you put a new set of strings on, you've probably discovered already that you have to do a little more tuning than usual until they settle in. And then of course right about the time they settle in, you really want to change strings again which you don't have to do, you just want to. These strings will last quite a while. They're going to stay in tune well because you took the time when you installed them. Again, great thing, about $14 and some odd cents, a Planet Waves neck stand. We sell them, got them on the back wall. Okay, show you a string. This is our small E string or what they call the first string. Again, I'm just going to take it past that post, and I am remembering to wind clockwise on this side. Again, for straight string pull. Now these peg winders come in various colors too. If you notice, this one's lime green and it's quite bright. It's like a neon. The reason I have a lime green one is because I set it in odd places as I walk around and I can find it easily. Now, at this point, I'm going to tune. All these pegs are in tight, and I didn't have to use a mallet on them. Believe me, I've seen people do it. I'm going to use the Snark tuner. These are great. This is an acoustic instrument. It does not have a built-in tuner. These Snarks will tune any instrument. They are very accurate. They rely on vibration. You clamp it to the headstock. I'm going to tune our big E string first. I was pretty close. I was only a step off. Tuner A. Now what I'm doing is bringing these close to pitch, and I'll show you why I'm not that worried right now. I'll just get it up to about where it should be. The reason I'm not worried about getting it dead on at this point is because these strings are going to stretch. I'm going to help them out. You will see videos online uh, and read articles of people telling you to pull the string up at the 12th fret about two inches off the fretboard and let it snap back. Wrong. What that does is prematurely wear the frets. It doesn't need to be done. What you're doing is trying to seat this string in the nut and in its bridge pin slot. What I do is grab it somewhere in the middle of the neck, and I shift these strings sideways about an inch, inch and a half. Now what I'm going to find is I'm flat by a full step because I did that. What that means is the strings needed to stretch. I'm going to do it one more time. And what I should find is that I'm probably a half step off. So my E, this E will now be at a D sharp. Yep. Cool. 
cool. We're in tune. That's it. Strings are changed. They're seated. There's no extra garbage hanging off the headstock to poke people's eyes out. Bridge pins are all seated. They have not popped. Now, know this. Next time you pull the guitar out, if you have to tune again, bridge pin might try and pull itself out just a hair. Just push it back in. What's keeping those in there is the pressure of the string pull this way. They're not meant to be pounded in again in a tight fit. So, the instrument's wonderful. All I ever do after I tune somebody's guitar is play a G chord. Each string individually. This guitar is ready to have fun. I want to thank you guys for watching this. Again, I'm Rick. This is Southern Thumb Music Studio. We're in Richmond, Michigan, and we are here to help you. We have acoustic instruments, electric instruments, drums, horns, you name it. Even a couple djembes, which are fun. So please stop by and see us. If you have any question on stringing your guitar, seriously, bring it in. I will spend some time with you. I don't mind at all. Because if you're happy, we're happy. That's the way it works. We're all musicians.